All right, we're back. Uh, episode 100 of the Morse Code Podcast. Dan Morse, Soapy Preup. If you're just listening to the audio, Soapy was uh, making a one and then two zeros with his hands. Well, that was official sign language. Not sure if that's gang related. Oh, that's true. I am bilingual. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, congratulations. Made it to 100. We did. We did. I think there actually might be a few more than 100. I think we did like a couple with part one and two. We did a bonus episode. But yep. the record, let the record show mm -hmm. uh, for our judicial portion of the program. Let the record show this is episode 100. Shout out Wilt Chamberlain. Oh, yes. Yeah. Our, who, who's like a famous um, athlete with the number 100? I think just Wilt Chamberlain. Okay. Oh, Ben Franklin. He's on the $100 bill. Oh, yes. Lord only knows how many of those will be raking up after this one. Those are the two. Those are the first two people that come to my mind when I think of that number. Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin and Will Chamberlain. Will Chamberlain. Me too. 100. Two absolute like ladies. Polar man. opposites. Oh, yes. Yes. Some would say. I think of like the red 100 emoji when I hear the word 100 now. Oh, yeah. Maybe Birdman. Like 100 star. St oh, no. Five star stunner was his album. But he would say the phrase 100 often. Keep it 100? Yes. Another popular phrase. Um, but anyway, not too, too much of us tonight. We have a, a fun guest on with us. Who, who do we have on tonight? Jimmy Toscano, a very, a very uh, gracious gentleman. Very funny guy. Italian fella. Ha handsome fella. Dapper. Great Maybe. looking guy. Yeah. No, that was a lot of fun. No, he's part of CLNS media crew. Like we had Bobby Manning on last week. He's on the same post game show. Um, just another grinder, bro. He talks a little bit about, you know, how everything's got going on and, and how he got there. Does a lot of writing, ton of podcasting or not podcasting type of bunch of post game show content. Um, all those guys over at CLNS media are really cool stuff going on. They, they've been, they've been a really good partner of ours since we kind of kicked this thing off, but uh, we'll get into that shortly um pretty shortly not too much from us like i said i do want to give the floor to you unless there's any not too much housekeeping on my end like i said celebrating episode 100 um that's pretty much it i'll pass it over to you and if there's anything you wanted to address to our audience yeah i figured um with it being the the century mark and it being about like a year anniversary since we started the Almost. show april april 25th by the way yeah the first episode <laughs> So if anyone wants to send us any nice anniversary gifts, feel free. I believe um, it's the gold anniversary. Yes. So like gold, just blocks of gold would be great. <laughs> uh, or gold, gold schlager, because there are like chips of gold at the, the bottom of that. Yep. Um, so yeah, I figured with that kind of anniversary coming up, what better time to go viral and also potentially be canceled. Uh, yes than this so a really quick story um we'll probably touch on this in a little more depth on the um the following episode but basically we touch on it with jimmy over the weekend paul pierce at a he was mm. on instagram live um a video that only had about 250 viewers he mm. went on at three in the morning and Is i that really after... what time it was it was that late yeah damn but again it's wow. la so it's only midnight Midnight, right. I was asleep for almost like six hours at that point. So I missed I didn't it. go to sleep for another hour and a half. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically he was on Instagram live and I was like, you know what? Paul Pierce is a pretty funny guy when, especially when he makes those videos, he just yells yeah. random words and then laughs into the camera. Yeah. So he's entertaining to watch. So I go on there <clears throat> and I'll, I'll set the scene. He's playing poker. He's at a, a pretty nice house. Um, there's like anywhere from six to 10 people at the table with him. He's sitting yeah. in a barber chair. He's decked out in all red. And oh if you don't know this, Paul Pierce, I'm pretty sure has affiliation Allegedly. Ties to the Bloods. Very popular up and coming gang. And Not to be Boston confused with, with the Blood family, who we've talked a lot about on our podcast recently. Oh, no, no, no. Different. I assume no connection. I don't know. Maybe. Probably equally deadly, though. Equally. Yeah. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. yeah equally, equally deadly. <laughs> equally haunted. 
So he's getting his hair cut. He's getting a nice fade. Someone hands him a blunt at one point. They're throwing oh poker chips, swearing. Like Paul Pierce looks like he's on Pluto. Like his eyes mm-hmm. are just puffy as fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it wasn't immediate, but like 10 minutes into the video, uh, there's some scantily clad women. Some of them are giving him a massage. Some of them are just like twerking in the background. There's like poker chips being thrown at them. And mm. Pierce is Hell living yeah. We still don't know if he's married or divorced. I think he's, he's probably not separated. married. Definitely separated. Yeah. There's separation. Yeah. So um, I chimed in and I put in what I thought was a throwaway right. comment. I wrote, where Rachel Nichols oh. at? That's what I asked. A simple sure did. one, two, three, four Six. word question. Four word. Yep. Simple four word question. I thought it was funny. Um and then I was like, all right, uh, I've had enough. It was a pretty entertaining video if you could still find it. I wake up the next morning and thanks to, I believe it was some people in Tyler's Discord, someone hit me up and said, hey, is this you? And did you just make Rachel Nichols go viral? Or did you make mm. her a trending topic? Sure enough, I looked it up. And it was, <laughs> it was a bunch of people going like, like, wow, Paul Pierce had the Instagram live video of the year. And also some blank like essentially had the audacity to also ask where rachel nichols was so i know this dude was down bad and like (laughs) super horny and whatever (laughs) and uh there's two ways to interpret it which i explained Mm -hmm. on splash brothers luncheon yeah two ways the first way to interpret that question is wow paul pierce is at a hilarious looking party with weed he's been handed a blunt there's dancers around him there's smoke Mm -hmm. there's beer It'd be hilarious if if Rachel Nichols was also a guest at this party. Sure. Fair to say that that's a good assumption, right? Assumption of what? That it'd be that's funny? A good, that's, a, that that's a decent way to interpret that question. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. The second way is, wow, there's a lot of attractive women behind Paul Pierce dancing pretty much naked. Mm. Is Rachel Nichols one of those people? That's how most of the internet took it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not going to tell people how to interpret interpret the joke anyways throughout the rest of the day like i remember when i first searched her name um without her at Mm -hmm. she was for sure trending and it had like a couple thousand tweets it it will say if there's a trending topic it will say the number of people that are talking about it and Mm -hmm. then i just got messages throughout the day dms comments on my my most recent posts just being like where's rachel nichols did you find out where she is Great question. Are you the dude that asked where Rachel Nichols was? <laughs> so um, odd. My whole thing was like, and again, I know we talk about it more, so I'm gonna, I, don't, I really don't want to drag this out, but there had to have been worse things said in that group chat. 100%. Outside of what was actually it. happening. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, so. we'll, we'll fast forward and we'll get into detail on the next episode, but if you fast yeah. forward, uh, like about 48 hours later, I think it was, Mm-hmm. Well, at some point, Pierce also tweeted "Good morning" whenever. Yeah, he Pierce woke up woke eventually. Up. Yeah, Jeez. and then uh, shortly thereafter, he got canned by old Mickey Mouse. ESPN fired him. <laughs> and if you don't know this, uh, Pierce and, and Rachel Nichols have a show together on the Jump, which he's a regular guest on. Um, and he got fired. So, indirectly, uh, no, not indirectly. I would say directly. Right, I had a role in him getting fired i think you directly think. had a role you had a direct role in making it a bigger story than it probably would have been i'll yeah. say that like because I, I think if it didn't involve another espn personality who they obviously value higher than paul pierce understandably <laughs> uh, i don't think it i still think he would have faced maybe a suspension or something yeah um but they're just like we can't have this so yeah, I but again, think... it, it's not like Rachel Nichols came out and was like, well, again, publicly at least. Who knows what she actually talked to? I'm sure she wasn't. She wasn't thrilled. But um, <laughs> you know, it's like she came out and did like a cliche like iPhone notes statement or something. She played into it, and I think she also realizes like I'm not getting fired. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like it's not every day my name is trending. I probably gained some followers from it. Um, so I don't know. I mean, ESPN did what they had to do. I contemplate firing you every day. I just, <laughs> sometimes you have to make a pros and cons list. So I'd like to say to the listeners, um, any Paul Pierce fans that are in the crowd, 
Mm. If you like me, and I'm pretty sure like Dan would prefer Paul Pierce to be on the NBC Boston coverage of the NBA. If that yes. somehow happens, you know, the show and the person to thank for that. So at the very least, you don't have to see Paul Pierce on ESPN anymore. I know people are tired of him trolling, but I also just, I don't like guys that have to go on ESPN because they nah, can't really get fit. themselves. Like I always wanted him to be on TNT. I thought he would have been such a great, oh, good call. hilarious fit with the rest of those guys, but Me they too. can only have so many people on that panel. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, it, it reminds me like when you talk about like, Hey, if he goes to NBC Boston, like, you know, make sure you thank me. It's like that cliche Twitter thing. Like, Hey, like make sure the praise is as loud as the hate. <laughs> like, <whatever. laughs> I forget that actual phrase, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, like, I see you. Like, let's make sure those, cl- those cheers are as loud as your booze or like yeah. whatever it is with like players. I'm trying to, I know I'm not going to get it right either, but it's nah. something like, uh, you you weren't there for my downfall, so I don't want you oh, there for the that's come a different up or something one. like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you if you weren't if you weren't rocking with me when I was a misogynistic pig, <laughs> don't hop on when I'm <laughs> when I'm when I'm putting Paul Pierce in the booth. And probably again, you're probably gonna get scow fired if that happens. So <laughs> it's just a domino effect of firing former Boston athletes. That's all right. I'll give Only people a really quick glimpse. There was a time for about 24 hours where I was scared, not of like the backlash because, and again, this is something we'll talk about, but there was like a little bit of backlash for the most part. Like people know how to take it as a joke. The thing that I was scared about is I'm not lying. Paul Pierce's affiliation with the bloods. I was like, this guy just got fired. Like, is he going to somehow find a way to point? But then I was like, I wouldn't go that far, but I would say shit. Like if you you look at what he's been doing since then. Would you freak out if you hopped on Instagram and saw like a, a red one in the inbox and saw like a message from Paul Pierce? Oh, I'd be terrified. Oh, that'd I definitely be so would scary. cancel my account and I would not read that message. Have to. Uh, <laughs> oh, that'd be scary. But I or am like, thinking... or a message like, "Hey, like this is Paul's boy. Like we need to talk." Or like Paul's <laughs> lawyer. With just an emoji. Uh, I was gonna say, never mind. I was gonna say something problematic. I'm not gonna say it. Okay, but uh, that's a good. Good move. <laughs> But I don't know. Like I said, we'll get into it. I don't want to get, I don't want to steal too much thunder from the interview. But again, um, cheers to 100. Let's get into our talk with, uh, with Jimmy from CLNS. And we'll see you guys at uh, episode 101. All right, let's do Peace. it. All right. Uh, this is episode 100, Morse Code Podcast. So oh, wow. Priya- yeah, congratulations, by the way. 100. You're Thank a you. Very special guest. Uh, and also, pissed. congratulations to you too, Dan. You get- oh, thank you. More, more so to Jimmy. To Hundreds of hundreds of miles on it. I feel like now I got to step up my game for the for this. <laughs> yeah, dude. Lot. We uh, Bobby took so, it pretty hard last time when he heard he was only number ninety nine. <laughs> uh, we we fun. gave him the ninety nine episode treatment, so we're we the red episode. red carpet for this one. I'll make sure that I I bring that up too. Please. All right, sure. So yeah, it's a uh, so Priyap, aka Cambodian Prince Dan Morse, uh, and our special guest tonight is another member of. CLNS Media, uh, the the Celtics post game show on YouTube through CLNS, uh, and a writer on Celtics blog, Jimmy Toscano. What's up, What's up fellas? What's up, Jimmy? How you doing? Thank you for Good. having me. I'm I'm pumped to be the number one hundred. Yeah, yes. we planned this months months in advance, and I I had to work up the courage <laughs> to uh, send the DM. Yeah. yeah, you timed it perfectly. You really yeah. did. But the, yeah, the best, um, the, the best part is that 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 Bobby Manning, who's who's on my show, he has to mm-hmm. settle for ninety nine, which nobody remembers. Correct. So, Very good point. No one remembers the runner up. <laughs> We've actually <laughs> both out Bobby and I have already forgotten about it. So, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Big Bobby. Time. Sorry, Bob. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> coming off the South wind, nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. Can't do that very often, but yeah, this is this is something. They should do some numbers. Um, go ahead, Soap. What do you got tonight? Actually, still branching off the number 100, the oh average score per team of that game was 100 points, which is <laughs> that was that was a really weird. That was like watching basketball from 10 years ago. The fact that it was the average one to 99. What's the average point right now in the NBA? It's got to like be like 115. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. crazy. The offense is unreal right now. There's no defense. 
Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Very good point. I remember, I think it was like late third quarter when it was in the 60s last night. I remember it was like 66 to like 63 or something. Yeah. And it I was felt like, kind of good. <laughs> it was different. Yeah. It was a nice little, yeah. It was like, okay, I kind of like this. This is cool. This is, this is, so this is what basketball feels like. Okay. Get this. Yeah. That's what all those old heads down the street keep talking about as far as old school <laughs> basketball goes. Well, like I, I, watch, saw, a, I watch a lot of Jordan one. highlights and yeah, like, like I still do to this day. And I think we're all mm-hmm. around. Well, what year did you graduate college, Jimmy? I think we're all around the same age. I graduated in 2010. Damn. Where'd mm. you go? I went to Suffolk in uh, Boston, downtown Boston, Suffolk University. Nice. Okay. So Dan and I yeah. are both 2011. So yeah, we grew up with like the same experience yeah. basketball wise. But yeah, I still watch a lot of uh, Jordan highlights and it's hilarious to see like, it's really not that long ago if you go and watch like his series against the Jazz. Mm-hmm. But those right. games were ending... 84 to 82 88 yeah. to 78 like grind yeah absolutely. <laughs> dude even not that far back look at like um like when the pistons won it in like 04 they would literally hold teams to like 68 points <laughs> like, you weren't allowed right. to score against the pistons right <laughs> was well hilarious. so so much has changed now i mean I the three the three point is like you know obviously as you guys know like everyone's shooting threes so yeah, of games are getting higher and, you know, free throws and everything like, you know, they have, they, everyone's got to figure out how to maximize, you know, your, your offensive mm-hmm. output, I guess, so to speak. So I'm not surprised. And then like this couple of this year with just no practices, that's huge for a team, like to get on the same page defensively with communication yeah. and, and things like that. And, and not to mention like the games just keep coming. So, I mean, you gotta, you gotta assume these guys are a little bit more winded in some of these games than they typically would be. Mm-hmm. so not to give them not to give them all excuses but it just does feel like defense i saw a crazy stat like a week ago that it's like the top five like most efficient offenses in the history of like since like the shock look era are all mm-hmm. from this season oh yeah like, i believe that like yeah. like it's just un- unbelievable like i would totally that, you know that. it's no surprise i guess when you when you consider everything going on Dude, it's funny to me when they talk about not that they talk about this much but like when people talk or debate about like defensive player of the year it's like, bro, when games are like 130 to 125, yeah. like who the fuck's a defensive yeah, player of the year? Like who up. gives a shit? <laughs> like what like what is the defensive player of the year? That's probably why they'll give it to Rudy Gobert again because he just blocks shots. Yeah. Like he's right. big. He doesn't, he doesn't and play he's... actual defense. Nah, he's deep boy. Guaranteed. Yeah, they'll just, they'll just look at the stats. You're right. Just like um, sort from the top. Okay, yeah, he led the league in blocks. Give it to him. Yeah, yeah. that works. <laughs> no one's going to question this. I don't know. I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, sometimes it gets ridiculous, but I'd rather watch what the, I mean, not even just Celtics specifically. I think in general, if I'm watching like a prime time, like national game, like, yeah, obviously I'd rather watch like yeah. Warriors Nets when like Steph is like, you know, shooting yeah, threes than something like last night or like those other like Detroit Pistons, like extreme examples. Um, right. But you're right. It, it was like a, it was a throwback last night. That was good old fashioned Knicks basketball last night. <laughs> you could have told me way, Charles Oakley was on the court. Way throwback. That was a good time. Yeah, the, the Knicks' recent history is complete garbage. Um, you know, you yes. hope that they can come back to some sort of relevancy. When the Knicks are good at like basketball, I mean, you guys yeah, remember those late those late nineties teams? Like that was just like fun. Yes, um, I agree. You know, I'm not saying that we were that old, but we were old enough to watch. You know, I think those are the years that we kind of got hooked on a basketball, like. And like when New York's good at anything, baseball, basketball, like it's just better yeah. for the sport. You know, it's an easier, you know, another target, you know, a team with a target on their backs. And, you know, you get some guys with some characters and the New York media is like undefeated. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, really, it's it's good to see them to see them good. Um, I would have loved if, you know, Kyrie or Durant, Durant chose the Knicks mm-hmm. over the freaking Nets that no people in Brooklyn don't even care about the Nets, man. Like nobody mm-hmm. cares about them. That's so sad, and and they they could be on a trajectory. I don't think they are, but I mean, who's to say that they don't become some sort of a a, a mini dynasty over the next few years? Oh yeah, and it's still oh, gonna yeah. be like Madison Square Garden <laughs> over the fucking Barclays Center. Like, no yeah, one, and, and no one gives a shit about that place. And no, that's the worst part. Like, you're you're dead on about the Knicks. Like, and I know that's a cliche in sport. Like, the game's better when the Yankees, the Cowboys, like whoever sure. is is good. But bro, even like even going back to like the Carmelo Knicks, like when those teams were at least in the playoffs, it was it was a cool scenario. Like there's nothing worse than like a Sunday ESPN game with the Knicks at the Garden, which is arguably like a top basketball venue of all time, right? Yep. Like the guys in the front row, and then you just see like 
like Raymond Felton and like Jakeem Noah, like taking the court. And it's like, this just blows. Like I know. watching right it, now. It's tough. And like, I've, I've talked to tons of players and they all pretty much all agree that Madison Square Garden is the best place to play basketball. They've ever played basketball. And even some hockey players have said that about, mm. about playing hockey there, that it's like unreal, like just being under the lights and, you know, just the, mm-hmm. the whole atmosphere, you know, walking out and being in, you know, New York city and yeah. Someday I'll get back to that point. I mean, the Knicks are, you know, they're a nice little story, but let's be real. They're, they're still, they still have shades of the Knicks. We saw, we saw a little bit of that last night, you know, and it's good that, you know, Barrett seems to be all right. And mm-hmm. who knows about top in and um, Randall's solid for sure. He's having a great season, but they still need that. You know, it's a superstars league. They, they need a star. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, have you been to Madison square garden, Jimmy? I have. Yeah. To cover or just as a fan? Just as a fan, yeah. I never actually covered a, um, a game there. Um, hmm. I, I guess I could have, but we never, we just never made it out that way. And yeah. I've also been to Barclays as a fan, and it was just so night and day. It was like this is, yeah. this is like the AAA of 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 New York City of New York basketball right now. It was before, you know, it wasn't this year. It was when the Nets. Right. It was actually Celtics were playing the Nets, and I was there with some family, and we just were like, let's go to the game. So we just got tickets and the Darren it's Williams crazy. era. Yeah, it's crazy. Like um, <laughs> the, the balcony of Barclays is so freaking steep. Like, yeah, if you just trip, you're you're going down a few flights. <laughs> like, absolutely. But, but yeah, that's the, that's the Nets. Speaking of the Nets, they're looking pretty damn good again. With you know, Durant didn't skip a beat his first mm-hmm. game back. Yeah, you could argue he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can make that case. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, Agreed. has anyone else come back from an injury quite as smoothly as Kevin Durant? No. Like now, now two or three times he gets COVID and he comes back and is like, I assume his lungs are actually stronger than before somehow. Dude, knows, he's bro. just he's so, so smooth. He, I mean, it's serious injury that he came back from. I mean, Achilles is he's mm-hmm. like the first guy to come back and like kind of look exactly the same. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, he, yeah, and like he just spends. Listen, he he just uses that time to troll on Twitter, man. Like that's what he does. He's a troll. He's a troll. Like he said, when he logs onto the app, he's someone told him to relax, and he said, "No, there's no relax here, champ. I'm on yeah. ten at all times until yeah. I log off this fucking thing." Yeah, so true, man. It's like his alter ego. It's like because think about Durant, like he's not that personable, like in mm-hmm. person, really. No, he's kind of an he's asshole just, or like standoffish yeah, sure. a little he's bit. Got yeah. This whole second like troll persona, mm-hmm. like on, behind. He's, like, he's your classic keyboard warrior, man. He really is. Mm-hmm. We probably oh, all weird, dude. At least he's bought into it and he's admitted, you know, I do have the burners. So I'm like, whatever, yeah. I guess like you are super sensitive, but if I can get over that yeah. fact. Well, that's kind of the weirdest part. I feel like if you acknowledge you have burners, it kind of defeats the purpose of having burners. No. Right. Like why well, would once it he like, got we... busted? He had to own it. Yeah, true. I guess. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Some of them are so funny, not even KDs, but just like when like like ownership or like gms get like uh accused of having a burner it's made like the oh, day yeah. before like one follower and like yeah. just the most like scripted like like clapbacks that like people chirping management those are just like oh, bro, right it's so you don't know what you're doing you wasn't it uh... invest in some kid to come run your burner accounts who actually knows how humans talk on the internet right. who, who was the the sixers it wasn't colangelo was it um, wasn't Daryl Morey? No, because this was a couple seasons ago where he talking. got busted oh, with a, okay. a burner, and it was it was mainly like a burner handled by his wife, and <laughs> his wife was attacking people or clapping back at people who were like saying that her husband was wearing too many of the same shirts con- on like consecutive appearances. <laughs> They'd be like, "Wow, like it, he can't like <laughs> he can't wear anything other than a, a a collared shirt with like the white collar." And I guess one of the famous replies was something like, yeah, and he does wear different shirts, like find a new slant. And that was kind of the giveaway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, he has a very nice walk-in closet. Yeah, yeah. His four-bedroom colonial-style house. Bitch. Yeah, those yeah. are fun. Enough about, um, enough about burner accounts. Enough about boomers uh, on the internet. <laughs> yeah, right. here. I want to, I want the listeners who, if they don't, already watch your show they should um mm. and follow you online but yeah dude how, how did you get to where you are with clns i know you've been at nbc boston so tell us a little bit about, about the journey yeah so i i try I won't try to bore you guys too long but it all started actually back in college i was 
you know, I went to school for broadcast journalism and I knew I needed a reason I went to Suffolk was because I, I wanted to be in an area where I could be in the middle of it all. Like I didn't, you know, I got into better journalism schools, but to me, it felt like it was more like who you, who you knew and who you were going to know and, you know, sort of applying that in like internships and things like that. So mm-hmm. luckily I, I, I met some, so, you know, I, I've always been a, you know, I grew up a Celtics fan like you guys, and I grew up reading Celtics blog. One day I just reached out to Jeff Clark and I was like, Hey, like, I'm an undergrad at Suffolk University for broadcast journalism, looking to get into sports reporting. And I did some like some small articles for them and whatnot. And then eventually, like they were like, I, I, I'm fairly certain that they were like the first blog that got like a media credential. And like, I think I got it I'm, like right up there. It's like mm-hmm. this was this is back in like 2009, let's say. And like blogs weren't anything what they are now. You know, now you go to a basketball game and there's blogs, bloggers are all over the place. But right. back then it wasn't the case. So they got a, approval to go to Marquise Daniels press conference. Okay. Mm. Q6. And, uh, Q6. That's right. Yeah. Q6. Dude. And I was like, they like you, it's all yours. And I was like, I was like the nervous I've ever been like driving to Waltham where the Celtics used to practice for this introductory press conference. And then after that, man, yeah, I just, um, I got to, you know, doing that a little bit more. And um, I should say, pri- I think I may have jumped ahead a little bit. Prior to that, at Suffolk, there were, the Boston Bruins were, they used to do, I don't know if they still do, but they used to do a program where students could get press passes and go as a student reporter. So I joined like our school newspaper, online newspaper, the Suffolk Boys, shout out. And uh, I started going to Bruins games. And I was like the only one going. I don't think a lot of schools knew about it. So I was going to all these Bruins games, meeting people, meeting reporters, learning how to like, you know, sort of be professional on the field. And then the more people I met, the more opportunities that I got, I ended up, you know, covering Celtics games. And then I, I, you know, met, um, Jeff Howe, who now covers the Patriots for, um, Mm -hmm. the athletic, I believe he was at a a newspaper called the Metro and he was moving from the Metro to Nesson. So he was like, Hey man, I'm leaving this, leaving the Metro. Let me get, get in touch with my editor, got in touch with his editor, started writing for the Metro. And then from the Metro, I met Tom Curran. He was working at NBC, at NBC Boston, NBC Boston, just um, like we're revamping their whole coverage and they fell into a ton of money, apparently, clearly if they hired me. And, uh, you know, I was one of, one of a bunch of people that, not that I got any of it, but I think they just had some money to, you know, open up some extra positions. So I got a position with them, like on the desk, just editing at nights, like 2 a.m. I'm like bombing away at like on the keys, just write, rewriting like little stories. And then just one thing led to another. Now, you know, I started doing, you know, backup duty for Celtics and backup duty for Patriots. And then all of a sudden I was just covering them regularly. So it's kind of how it all started. And I always tell people that, like, just get your foot in the door any way you can. You know, it's it's great to take the classes and you'll learn a ton in the classroom, but you really need to, at a young age, try to apply that to real life yeah. situations. You know, get your foot in the door any way you can and, like, always be, like, a good person as best you can because – it's such a small field where you never know who you're going to bump into later on where they might have a connection and might be leaving or, or have an, or know of an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people like, put yourself out there and just like, you know, work hard. Don't, don't like, you know, the best and worst advice I ever got was stay in your lane and one, and and one way you do want to, but in another way you want to definitely, you know, branch out to the point where, you know, you can show that you can do other things because the more you can do mm-hmm. in this business, in this field, the, the better off you're going to be and the quicker you're going to maybe find yourself with an opportunity to help out. And it might not always be, might not be exactly what you want to do, but you just got to put yourself in that situation where you can meet people and opportunities will eventually just come your way. So that's kind of a long answer, I guess, to your question. But yeah, it all just pretty much started by just, you know, chipping away at it. You know, like yeah. I said, the ruins, reaching out to people, doing a little press conference here, a media day there. And then eventually it turns into something more regular, which is. That's great, man. Yeah. No, and then CLNS. Hear. So yeah. <laughs> I didn't even mention CLNS, but so CLNS, CLNS <laughs> has kind of been there along the whole way um, mm. because they were, you know, Nick Chelsea, the owner of CLNS is, is a very good friend of mine. And he's been somebody who's, um, you know, I've always sort of tried to contribute to what they've had going on years, years back mm. um, when they were, weren't necessarily what they are now. Um, you know, just contributing, whether it's like a call-in show or, um, you know, when, when somebody from their company would get a press pass or Nick himself, I would, you know, would meet up and I'd sort of kind of show him around and, and sort of help him, help him out in that way. And then, 
yeah, the more years went on and like my role was sort of changing with different companies like Celtics blog. I, I don't really do much directly with them. A lot of the stuff I do with them is through other places and they were like kind of post to it. Um, and CLNS, CLNS is one of them. And then it just got to the point where once I left NBC, I was kind of looking for another company to, to, you know, to do stuff, you know, to put content up and, and CLNS was just a good match. So they're awesome. They do, you know, tons of podcasts, they do tons of YouTube, just content. They're pushing out more content yeah. than like anybody right now. So we're doing um, right now, what we're doing that's really picked up a lot of steam is that is that YouTube post game show. Mm-hmm. Um, that's been a ton of fun. It's basically just like a bunch of us, you know, usually four of us, sometimes three, um, just shooting the, I don't know if I can swear on the show, but shooting yes. the, you know what, and just hanging out and, and talking about the game or talking about what's going around in, in the NBA. And um, I think a lot of fans like it because, we're kind of like, you know, we kind of like think and talk and act like fans too. You know, we're just kind of, if they play like crap then we're going to call them out and be frustrated and pull our hair out. What the hell's going on? If they play well, you know, well, same thing, you know, we'll talk about what we thought they did well and we're, you know, all the positives. So this year it's been a lot more negative probably than, Mm -hmm. than what anybody wants, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. And and the cool thing about the show is that people watching can get involved, like whether it's on the chat or things like that. So Mm -hmm. what's kind of what I'm doing now. Yeah, dude, I, I, I really enjoy the show. I, I know Dan does. Um, I, I did have a question about the show, but really quick. Er, earlier you said, um, you know, try to try to get your foot in the door however you can and also be nice because it's a small, like, circle of people. Definitely. So kind of a small mm-hmm. world. So you're saying if you were to go viral for, I don't know, like an Instagram live comment, you want to be careful about <laughs> what you say and who you say it about. You, what you're saying? you might want to, yeah, you might want to think twice depending on what you're going to say. Yeah. You, mm. you just might want to, but I, I think you could have done a lot. I think you can do a lot worse based on, based on what I, what you told me. <laughs> okay. I think one of the best parts that most people don't know, um, I guess we can edit this out if we need to, but we're, we're also, we've also been in like email back and forth with Rachel Nichols people about getting her on the show too. <laughs> and yeah. I don't think this helped in any way. <laughs> so we might have to, uh, yeah. Yeah. You might have to pump the brakes on that one for a little bit. Let this fester over or like I was telling Soapy to hell of an icebreaker. If you ever meet her like out somewhere hell or nice comes on the show soon. Hell I was going to say that's, this is how we could hash it out and just let me explain like where I was coming yeah. from. And you know, I meant no harm, no malice. Yep. And I'll Shut let up. you take this one. Soap, but, uh, but yeah, that's that's another funny part of it. Shout, shout out to Paul for being a good Absolutely. sport about it. And wherever he goes next, like if he lands at NBC Boston, dude, oh, you know, sick. you know that'd exactly who to thank. I mean, we're Fair. looking at him. I'm, I mean, I'm sure you guys are Pierce, Pierce guys, ride, ride uh-huh. or die. Pierce oh, guys. yeah, of course. You can't be a Celtics fan in your 30s and not like want to die for Paul Pierce. I mean, My Pierce stock might have gone up after this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I don't see that as a negative dude, at all. Hey. I mean, it's like a lot his, of fun. His, his first tweet back was good morning. It was like five o'clock. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. That was so perfect. I was like, yeah, that's perfect. But you're right. I mean, he's, yep. he's not like canceled or anything. Like he's going to end up no. somewhere else. No. Oh yeah. We joke, we joke that he might be on the CLNS post game show sometime soon. Mm-hmm. Dude, <laughs> I dude, I hope so. If you, uh, last, right? if yeah. you get him on and you need a guest sixth person, oh, you, you can know, let him I- confront the, the guy who, may have played a role in his that would uh, do numbers career trajectory (laughs) um i mean i don't i'm sure you guys saw he has gotten offers for work outside of uh, barstool's already offering him something i was talking about like i don't know it was like a porn company or like an adult magazine offered him like 250 g's to host you know what i'm talking about soapy Mm -hmm. host like a porn show <laughs> like, like a, a basketball show. show with strippers behind him is what it was i don't know how that works but i'd watch it he's, he's, oh, he's talking about of, accepting the job he yeah did host yep. one of those. <laughs> what's that yeah he, he's he's already like got experience pretty much doing that I mean, <laughs> like you said jimmy like you gotta like get your get your foot in the door and, and your foot in the door be afraid you see to, that? Yeah. If, if pierce ever wanted to get involved in something like that like that's how you do it mm-hmm. that's how you do it what an Paul, I know you're watching. Just... You're welcome. No worries, anyway. <laughs> what a night. Think... Yeah, that was never a great fit. I feel like the other thing I thought was kind of weird was so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he was was he on the jump Monday or no? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, they didn't even mention that. his name. 
obviously. Okay. Yeah. Because the, the news didn't come out till later that evening, right? Yeah, yeah they mentioned they, it on like Lebitard's radio show, who's not on ESPN. Yeah, anymore, I know that. But... I meant like from like the higher ups. Like what what took so long to make a decision? They probably couldn't get in touch with them. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> He's too busy living know. his best life, you know. Very He's good point. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like, it'd be they'd funny if you saw like at the real Bob Bob Iger. Is that who it is? The Disney owner like jumps yeah. into the chat. <laughs> Ball, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. So my fun. office on Monday, but I don't know. It's like I'm curious, and I was talking to my barber over the weekend about it. Like, yeah, I was kind of laughing at like that two hundred fifty thousand dollar offer. But like, what do you think those guys make? Like at ESPN, like those ex-players who are like because he's kind of like an in and out personality pretty much like he does the jump he's on right. some pre-game here and there like it's i don't think he's clearing much more than 250 do you for what for what his role was yeah I like his contract like, at espn yeah he's not like a mainstay i don't know if he gets paid i'm sure i think paid. there's hosts that make millions like i'm oh, sure I rachel know. nichols is up close yeah. but i don't think paul pierce is on that level I mean, dude, if, if you're a former athlete, you need you need to get paid a good amount of money to That's true. do something. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, yeah. why are you even doing it? You know, unless unless you're like Antoine Walker status or something, and you mm. and you need that, and need every dollar. But I need this job. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. You know, I don't Pierce, know. Pierce Pierce has made a lot of money over his career, so I'm sure he's not doing That's it true. For, for chump change. If, if yeah, if I, I like betting odds. I think Barstool would be a good bet. I just don't know what he would do there. I don't. That's know the thing is like what, yeah, podcast what, guy or I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I guess they have, they're, they're building like a YouTube sort yeah. of platform over yeah. there that I guess theoretically you could do something like that. But yeah, I don't know what, other than Portnoy just being a huge Celtics fan. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Sure that, I'm sure I, they could figure it out though. I just know if he's ready, like, you know, no offense or anything, but I don't know if he's ready to jump from ESPN to like a regional like network, like NBC boss. And granted it's one of the bigger, bo- right. one of the bigger right. markets in the country. But, well, I don't think he'd want to move to Boston either. I mean, he'd have to do it like point. Burke. Yeah. He'd be like zooming in like Burke, you know? <laughs> and I I feel like they'd have to back up the Brinks truck for him too because that would be like time. a pretty very good pay point. cut. That's um, a very good point. It, it, that's a tough negotiation if you're offering less money than a show where you would just talk about basketball in a room with strippers in probably Los <laughs> Angeles. That's a tough ask. Yeah, that's very a good point, Sophie. Tough, tough decision right there. Very good point. That'd be like a talk it over with my wife well actually he wouldn't but I, it'd be like a pros and cons list like of oh, yeah wow. did you confirm that he's divorced right not married i don't know because i could have sworn like at last <laughs> sometime last year Pierce. i was curious because he like he doesn't he do shit be. like that on instagram live but he's just kind of a clown when he's on social oh, yeah. media so i was like i pegged I never saw his wife in videos and pictures so i thought mm. for sure he was divorced but if you look it up yeah. online it says he's not I think during I'm the live, pretty, someone asked him. Someone was like, "Dude, aren't you fucking married?" And Where's he's your like, wife? No, at? I'm not married, man. He said that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, then that probably answers the question. Yeah. It's worse if he was married and says that. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't be- that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jimmy. they're separated for sure. Um, I okay. don't know, if, like officially or what, but I'm yeah, yeah. I'm barely yeah. Possible, single not. guy. He was sell. It was yeah. a Hall of Fame celebration, right? <laughs> Wasn't like the yeah. Hall of Fame announcement or something. It was a divorce. What a night. Yeah, <laughs> or settlement. I mean, anyone who's been divorced can oh, probably be like, yeah, man. that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Something to look forward to. There we go. Jimmy, you uh, but sorry, some... Soapy. You did you have more thoughts on that? Um, anyone else's that. career you want to ruin? While we're <laughs> you you guys had some controversy yourselves, Jimmy. Um, Boy. I think it was about a week ago with the Marcus Smart thing. Oh yeah, dude. I thought the How about that. The funniest part, so if anyone isn't aware, look up uh, Marcus Smart and CLNS. He basically went at Sherrod. Um, I think he said, like, shut the F up about yep. Sherrod's like, crit- critique of whether or not Marcus that. Smart is still the same defender that he used to be. Is what it boils down to. Wait, was he on the show or addressed No, it but he did a post-game conference? interview with Cedric Maxwell, and he called oh. out the Garden Report, which Damn. was... Oh, good publicity. Yeah. yeah. The funniest guess, part, though... It's, what's that no go ahead jimmy no what's the funniest part i thought the funniest part was you guys um you guys all got like the text message at the same time when i was watching the show <laughs> and everyone being like dude i don't know what the fucking story is i'm still trying to get it from nick and then john wouldn't oh, say what it was so i was like john yeah. like tell the story i was like the odd yeah. guy out everyone knew what was going on i'm like sitting there like 
bro we're live <laughs> like well, I, I want in on this joke whatever's going on oh that's so funny but yeah no i was like it was i mean that, to me it's kind of crazy like uh-huh. you know you're 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 marcus smart you're on the celtics you just you know come off the court right coming right off the court after after a win and the first thing you're thinking about is what four idiots on a youtube show you mm-hmm. know said about your play recently like that's to yeah. me it's crazy that that's silly yeah I agree. and in, in, in any did he did mention Sherrod specifically i think probably because Sherrod's the only one you know you know he doesn't probably mm-hmm. even know who at least i'll speak for myself he probably, he probably knows joe sway and maybe mm-hmm. bobby I, I don't know but maybe he knows what i look like but i think Sherrod's a guy that like obviously stands out to him he clearly knows who Sherrod is so he's probably like yeah Sherrod and like those guys in the garden report but the crazy thing about it was like we're not really criticizing his defense really that much at all. I mean, like, mm-hmm. I'm sure we probably, you probably mentioned it in passing. Oh yeah. Like he, like he got blown by or something like that. But like, it's the other things that we've criticized him about that, you know, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it. Sorry. But I mean, I think there, some of them are pretty yeah. fair criticisms. Like I don't, well, you know, Bobby like, brought it up last time. His defense has like visibly gone downhill. Like it has yeah. gone probably in the opposite bit, direction. Like, it me, it's it like is. some of the, decision making like the shot selection has been pretty tough especially late in games so listen mm-hmm. we all know like what marcus smart is capable of and is worth to the team but the, it doesn't mean that you're not you're not going to be without like your warts and we're not gonna, obviously we're obviously going to mention them like mm-hmm. it's like that with, with everybody so i mean it's nothing personal but i mean he felt pretty he obviously felt like it was bothering him enough where he wanted to you know play better i guess i don't i don't know yeah but no, like weird. hey if that's what it took for, for the defense to step up, then I guess, you know, credit, credit the Garmin for, uh, for that win. Maybe, I don't know. I, I thought it was a fair like explanation from, I, I can't remember if it was you or John that responded to it afterwards. Right, John. I'm going to give you the credit though. Cause you're the one that's on our show. <laughs> Wait. Um, like it was basically, it's not that we're calling Marcus smart out on, um, a decline in defense like we are saying that that is a thing but it's more so if the other things start to fall and like the decision making and the shot selection and stuff like that when when all that starts to become a problem then you're also going to point out like yeah and on top of that like his defense isn't as great as it used to be so it's not like that was the grand premise of the whole thing it just happens to be no. I mean the team just isn't playing well this year so it's fair to just look at all of the the problems that, right. that they've well, had. And, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. And like, we're, we don't want to go on the show and talk about everything they're doing wrong, but sometimes they give you no choice. I mean, some of these games have yeah. been just all right, ugly and just like sad performances. And then you get like Brown and Tatum, like saying they're like, Oh, like everyone's so negative or the media, blah, blah, blah. It's like, mm-hmm. you get all the praise when things are going well. So don't you expect yeah. to get some of the blame when things aren't going well? And it's like, it's the way you guys respond to it, which has been like one of the biggest issues. Even Brad Stevens has been like, yeah, we don't, we don't respond well to adversity. We haven't all year. So it's like, no, they respond terrible to less. adversity. Yeah. Focus less on what, like, <laughs> where you shouldn't even care about what we're saying, to be completely honest. And I'm sure they probably don't, but yeah. they're starting to get it more on like the national scale, too. I mean, you Definitely. got guys like Shaq, Perk, you know, D Wade was kind of gone about Jay Williams. I mean, Mm-hmm. people like on ESPN have all been sort of taking their, their shots. I think whenever they can get them in. So maybe that's something that's bothered them a little bit. I don't know. I, I, now that you say it out loud, that is kind of troubling. Like the two, even if you just focus on Brown and Tatum, like being shocked, not shocked, but like it being a, a subject to speak on that the media is talking about a clearly underachieving team. Like, you know, that's coming. Like this isn't like, this shouldn't be news that's why it's like it's troubling right. if you don't get that if, if that's a if that's your genuine response that why is this happening that's not a good sign because i think i think if anything i'm sure you'd agree the way i've described this team all season is just incredibly disappointing and just incredibly frustrating because it's like you have games i'm trying to think of some examples like a nice charlotte win the other day recently they beat milwaukee recently and then there's games like dallas where you just get your absolute right off of you and it's like who are we just, they're they're what are they a game under 500 right now maybe yeah. two they're literally the epitome of a like even keel exactly. one of the mill team which is and like, way way below than what preseason expectations were way right below expectations and you're today. yeah and you're just like you feel like a broken record sometimes talking about the same issues and the same style of play and like the same mm-hmm. like me first offense and you know kind of <sighs> laxic daisical defense and 
all these things and then like and you almost feel like they're you know their body language is just like stinks like, yeah oh so here we go again like another <laughs> loss like it's just like yep. geez guys like i know it's a job but you don't have to it's not a, you're not grinding a nine to five out there like how about you just yeah, sort no of like shit. bring bring a little bit here you know you also play in the eastern conference where like the four through 12 seed changed on a nightly basis <laughs> like, yeah they're, they're, you're good like we soapy and i talked about that before if you ever look at the standings like it's it's crazy it, how it's the top three and then it's like literally a seven or eight game gap between everyone else and everyone else is like a two game gap outside yeah. of you know like the bottom of the conference but playoff picture like there was i think up to probably the night they lost um who they lose to before the knicks was that dallas philly philly I think they were like oh. the eighth seed at the time. Yeah, waxed. I think they were the eighth seed at the time. <laughs> I tried to forget that one too. They've gone like five, eight, nine, four, seven in like a span of like two weeks. So it's crazy. Like I'd like to, I like I said, I think the only, the ceiling right now is the four seed. Like no one, no one outside right. the top three is going to crack the top three. And the four seed is certainly attainable. And it so, would only take one good run to not only get the four seed, but like put some space between you and five through eight. It would really only take one good run because the other teams have been that inconsistent. But oh, yeah. I don't well, that's the good know, thing about getting the four seed. You get into the four seed and technically you have home court for a round, which you can win. There's, And that at least gives – I don't think it's going to happen, but it at least gives you the opportunity for a chance for one of the three seeds, one of the top three seeds to lose in the first round. Again, I don't think it'll happen, but you never know. And then you get into the two, the second round – something crazy could happen um and then still you're home court Eastern like Conference doesn't matter as much this year yeah it's just so right. cra- it's it's i don't know it's yeah when, you, when you're a lot during the deadline too it's like i didn't kill danny for what happened because i didn't think there was a player out there that logist like realistically put them like now we're talking like now we're talking with the bucks the sixers and the nets no i don't think so i don't think aaron gordon and anyone else would have done that what are your thoughts right. around the trade deadline we asked bobby that too how did you feel about how that panned about out? About how it went? Uh-huh. Or maybe yeah, your, ex, so, your, your hopes going into it. Yeah, so I, I didn't want them to do anything crazy. I didn't want them to give up a lot, like asset-wise or anything like that, because I'm like you. I didn't think that they were going to – whatever they were going to do, I didn't think they'd be good enough to to be a top-tier team. Um, yeah. Like, are you going to be good enough to beat the Nets? Okay, then why are you panicking and doing something crazy right now? Well, and also, so, like, real quick, I get it. Like, I understand that's not an excuse to not do nothing. but. Right. You know what I mean? If anything, right, I no, just I, wanted I, to see a shakeup. Yeah, some. what I want. Yeah, what I thought they might do would just bring in like a depth guy, a wing guy. I mean, I think I think um, Fournier is probably better than what I thought that they were going to get. Uh-huh. But it was still along the lines of like not giving up a ton. Um, and whether or not you felt like they shouldn't have given up that TPE will determine if you think that you know they gave up a lot or not. Um, part of me wanted them to hold on to it because you just don't know who's going to be available in the off season. I mean. Right. It doesn't take much for a star, a star to say like I want out, and then all of a sudden mm. you have a TPE and you have you know picks and whatever else, maybe a rob or something like that. So that part of me was like, don't touch the TPE, but you can bring in a guy like Fournier. He can certainly help this team this year and what we've seen so far. I mean, who the hell knows now with this COVID issue that has just been dogging them all freaking year long. Mm-hmm. Um, so that might just completely backfire from we know, um, but giving up two second round picks is nothing. And then the TPE, right. who knows what it could have been. So I didn't, I didn't hate it. I thought it was fine. I mean, it's, it was too bad. They had to give up Tice cause he can help. Uh, but everybody else was just kind of like, whatever. So to answer your question, I was, I was fine with it, but I never thought yeah. like, okay, they're now a top tier team. I was like, okay, well now they're going to be like maybe a tougher out, you know, yeah. like maybe they get out of the first round. If, if they can get the four or the five, so you think out of the first round and make it difficult for whoever they play next, maybe, but I yep. still don't see them getting past the Nets. Sixers have obviously worked them this year. And the Bucks, Bucks are their best chance at getting out of the second round if they end up in the matchup. I agree. They've obviously shown that they can compete with them and beat them. So I think so too. Yeah. yeah I, next think, season, sorry. I was going to say real quick, like the other thing about the trade deadline, I was almost looking at it more like, like, like them playing defense. Like if they sign for an air, if they sign Aaron Gordon, that means Aaron Gordon doesn't go to the Nets yeah. or the Sixers or whatever. That's the only like way to lie. I said the same thing about Harden, like uh, going into this. I wasn't thrilled about James Harden coming to the Celtics. I didn't really want that at all. I was even on the train of like, you know, I wouldn't trade Marcus Smart for James Harden, which I 
can't say I agree with at this point in time, <laughs> but it's like, all I know is if we sign James Harden, at least that means James Harden can't go to the Nets. You right. know what I mean? And then, yeah, that would have been, a- we know what happened and now it's like, okay, game and over, I, but still, and I that's didn't sometimes even, how you have to look at it. And I didn't even think that Harden was going to work with, I was like, oh, Harden's going to the Nets. Like they're screwed. That's too many stars. There's only one, blah, blah, blah wrong doesn't matter they're fine <laughs> they're totally yeah. fine like they're just gonna <laughs> win every thing. game and, like that's gonna be it it's but, so sickening to watch it's just like yeah i'm trying to think i've probably watched like maybe i don't know maybe like three or four nets games this year since they've all been together yeah and it's just like you watch it and it's like what do you what are you supposed to do like you can only double team so many players <laughs> like you can't it, double team all three of them it's impossible no. <laughs> so someone's just gonna go off and, and like when they have a guy out like they still roll when the Celtics doesn't have matter a guy out, it's like yeah. forget about it it's like you're you're completely <laughs> if they have screwed. one if you have james harding Kyrie, or durant you're a pretty good team yeah you have if two the you're are, the celtics are ridiculous. without like pritchard you're like oh here we go oh, we're fucked yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> season's <laughs> over <laughs> there's eighth guy in the rotation oh, oh great that's oh. so true yeah oh grant's oh, going cold book it <laughs> gave them nothing tonight that's it they're out yeah going. oh my god uh, go, go ahead. So I know you had something before we, before we sign off. Yeah. Um, two quick questions <laughs> for you, Jimmy, before you sign you off. Uh, number one, what is your favorite snack to snack on during the post game show? Cause I know you're mm. a snacker. Ooh. And number two, um, how often do you read? Like you guys can all see the comments right on YouTube or is that only yeah. John that can see that? So yes and no, um, we can all see them. I use my iPad so for me to see them you guys might see me sometimes doing like this uh-huh. i'm like sc- <laughs> rolling up on my I- ipad so i'm like i can't even see like the guys anymore and i'm like trying to look at some of the comments as they're coming in mm-hmm. but the way it's set up on the ipad i typically can't see them that easily as the show is going on so i miss i miss a ton of comments like all the time and what i'll do the next day i'll, I'll watch i'll watch the show back with the live chat going and i'll be like yeah damn it they were really ragging on me for this for like this stretch and like i had no idea and like or yeah. whatever but yeah mm, um, john I, typically john's the one who puts the comments up on the on the screen he has that comment control and yeah i think the guys that are using like their desktops are they can, set see, up where they can see the comments pretty pretty easily so one of the but funniest yeah, I can, ones i, I good no i was gonna say yeah I, I can typically i can see them from time to time sometimes if like i'm not talking I might you might just see me like this and I'm just like reading the comments coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the funniest times I think on the show, and this is something I tweeted at you like a few weeks back, was that Grant Williams play where he had his back turned to the inbounder oh, and it was Trey Young of all people. So it was like Classic who, Grant. who who better to throw throw a pass off the guy's ass, but also like nail the floater perfectly. Like if that was Rondo or something. He would have then, I don't know, passed it out to the three-point line, so it wouldn't have mattered mm-hmm. as much. But yeah. that was like be perfect. And I think Grant Williams is becoming our JaVale McGee in terms of like Shackton moments, but he doesn't have any cool highlights to go with it. At least JaVale is like athletic and can dunk. Right. I don't know. Grant, Grant really- someone someone said the other day on Twitter he's a less athletic Jared Sullinger. <laughs> and I thought that put it pretty well. Which is hurtful. <laughs> that, is, that is hurtful on many levels. Yeah. Maybe he said shorter. But either way, not not a good comparison. Well, Grant had like that breakaway last week, and then Scout was like, "Oh boy, here we go!" And then like, sure enough, like I <laughs> buckle think up, like, three sixty pass to nowhere, and then, yeah. like it was that was the end. Dude, there was a great one last night. Um, it was a sequence of Marcus Smart. It was the Marcus Smart behind the back turnover, right? It was behind uh, his back to no one, it, which led to a transition layup, and then the return. Drive it was an outlet to Grant Williams. Went up and just got stuffed by I think Julius Randall or uh Taj Gibson or someone. <laughs> just got like one of those cliche, like all ball, just like like stopped yeah. them there and pushed them back down. Yep. And it's like grief. Like, what is this? There's, there's been a few Shaq in a fool moments over the line. I think you guys actually talked about it with Bobby, actually, right? Some of those oh, yeah. Did- Double, Such yeah. good ones. it's been that they, kind they of just season. keep building like yeah. it's honestly been that kind of season some good ones. my yeah. favorite snack that's that's mm. that's a good question so they always say i'm super loud like right mm. before the show or right when the show starts so i've changed my snacking to things that don't make a sound so right now i'm all about the uh, welch's gummies oh uh, great ooh. great snack i mean like those little blue pouches yeah 100%. That you still, like this yeah you can just they just go so quickly that's the problem 
Oh yeah, but, um, those are one serving type of snack. Yeah, yeah, you mm-hmm. gotta have those are excellent. Have packets. I mean, if yeah. you're just gonna go back for more anyway. So I've been doing that a lot. We usually don't um, do free ads on our show, but what well, well, yeah. well use product code Jimmy yeah. for half percent off the checkout. Yeah, those are good. I, I, I won't even tell you my other one then, because that'd be another ad. But basically, uh, it's okay. We'll let it yeah. slide. It's episode one hundred. We'll there get these, back there, a little bit. There are these um like tortilla chips out there from this company called Mi Nina. Mm, and uh see. they sell them in like the food markets like I- i've seen them in whole foods i've seen them in market basket but mm. it's um jalapeno agave is the flavor it's got like oh, this nice. little sweet little heat i don't think you can get them up in maine dan because like <laughs> they're they're like a massachusetts like locally type thing but if you live in like southern new hampshire or like massachusetts area, you should be able to get these and like I'm telling you they're hard yeah. to hard to put down but they're so loud so like i can't really eat ah, on the show and then once one. in a while once in a while, like a Friday night game, like maybe tomorrow night, I might have, I might have like a drink. I might have a drink to the side oh, of a okay. margarita or something like just, there you go. Try. You know, you Friday go. night, like, especially if I'm going to stop crappy Celtics game. Like I gotta, I gotta who, take who they got to tomorrow. Off. What's who that? They got tomorrow. Celtics. Timber, Timberwolves. <laughs> Trap <be> game. <laughs> yeah. Give me a grinder. Oh God. At home. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Sweet Jesus. What's the spread? Like minus you get, fucking 10? You get, They're, you get oh. cat coming in tomorrow. The cat's oh, been up there recently. Yeah. Oh, good I am looking forward to like watching Anthony Edwards, at all. though. He's I'm a big Anthony fan. Anthony Edwards has been fun. Yeah. I'm a big fan. That's a, yeah. That team, like, they can't really put, put they can't put it together, oh, but they've yeah. got some talented players. <laughs> I remember at one point, I was looking at this, it was during the Rockets losing streak, um, which got up to what, like 20? Like close to 20? Yeah, Rockets. I think it was 20. There was a point where I think they lost their 20th game and they were still like a game ahead, Minnesota. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's like, you. like, God, this team blows. Carl Anthony Towns, is, he, he could be one of those players that is, is available, right? Big Maybe. time. Who knows? I'd, I'd put together a bag for Carl Anthony Towns, I think. Or a pack. Jimmy breaking the news on our show. Fan. Yeah. <laughs> It's official. No, no. Marcus Smart, <laughs> two firsts. And... He fits the mold, though, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, a, you know, uh... I'd like him a lot young player he's got a lot of talent on a lose you know tough situation over there and how listen, old is he he's before tatum and brown right yeah he's like slightly maybe a year much. or two yeah yeah he's definitely like older than 25 but not not by much that's so fucking crazy how young these kids are now yeah god that's it's sickening like, um it's funny, I think we're all at the age now we're like we look at old basketball players as like fossils, but like they're our age. Dude, <laughs> like, dude. Yeah, I, I so just sad. said that today. There's two ways to look. I always get depressed when I, I think back to like when I was in college or high school, looking up, like I remember like looking up to like Carmelo at Syracuse, like, yeah. yo, this guy's the shit. Like, holy, yeah, yeah, whatever. Now it's like watching March Madness. It's like, that's not even close. I'm not even talking college anymore. Now it's like five or six year veterans in the NBA. I know. Like, oh my God. And then the worst, I, I think I tweeted this day, the worst is now seeing, oh, it's because Gary Payton's son got a 10 year deal today oh, with the Warriors. Martin I, can, I just can't even look at it. Martin, Martin son. I'm like, wait, Sante what? Samuel Jr. is in the draft this year. Um, yeah. Fucking, I think, I think I'm really going to tap out when Bronny's in the league. At that point, I'm like, I was an old man when like this kid was on like Instagram and TikTok. Now he's in the NBA. Like I, I can't Dude, watch this league anymore. You know that LeBron's going to stay in the league long enough Has to, to definitely. play with his We were son. talking about that last time, I think, like trying to do the math. I he's think it would be what? It. He's a he's going into his sophomore year of high school? Or he's a sophomore I now? I think so. That so that's be. sophomore, junior, senior, one year of college, unless it honestly changes by then, which it could. That's four or five years. So it'd be what, like 40, 41? Dude, he'll, he'll still be dominating probably. He'll be, he'll be solid. Yeah, he'll, he'll do it. And then, like, the other thing we're saying about no matter what, Bronny will get drafted to the team LeBron plays for, per Adam Silver, <laughs> somehow. Or, or Bron will – yeah, LeBron will figure out a way to, to make that – LeBron will start happen. his own team and just yeah. – Start we'll his own team, coach. tank, and then draft him. I think yeah, LeBron yeah. will start an actual Toon squad from Space Jam <laughs> if he needs to. <laughs> are, you guys, sure. are you guys – um, are you guys LeBron haters or are you guys – No. Really? Nah. No, we talked about this before. I, we're very, very roller coaster relationship with the Yeah, I respect. Yeah, it's I, it's at this point, I respect him. Yeah. yeah, like oh nine, like, and then need to like right. heels LeBron. No, nah, not really. I, I right. didn't. That wasn't a fan. Again, it's part of getting older. Like at this point, it's like I actually appreciate like some of like the like philanthropic stuff and community stuff sure. and 
you know, he's a good dude, um, incredible basketball player. But, and, and again, it's like the heat series were frustrating, but me and Soapy, Soapy and I talk about this all the time. It's like, eventually I just, I just assumed and expected LeBron to go to the finals every year. So it was like, I'm not going to get my hopes up. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've seen <laughs> yeah. this movie before. Like, it's all good. You like, we out. talk about whatever year it was when they went up 2-0. I think it was the scary Terry year. It's like, this is exciting. This is great. But I, I know how this ends. <laughs> I've seen this. This is a rerun. I've been right. watching it for 10 years. Doesn't matter. Game and 6, then, 2012 was the one that, like, <sighs> he really put the knife through our hearts that time and then just kept pulling it out and putting it back in. That was, oof, that was 45. That's a very good point. 45 like pierce had nothing for him that game mm-hmm. i think pierce finished with like 13 or something like that, oh, that um frustrating. was that the thunder from, heat year that was yeah. the first finals year right oh, yeah God. and that was like the celtics were up three two in the conference finals yeah. and i was like are game we really six. gonna bounce yep. lebron a third time like Mm-mm. this time on the heatles like that would have been even if they lost in the finals i would have taken so much joy in that oh yeah oh yeah i'd raise half it a was amazing that, that they even celtics even had that in them I, I i i don't think anyone thought that they had that left in the tank and then they just no. couldn't they got blown out at home that game yes six. game six was ugly i didn't and think then, i like, watched game seven i remember being at that game and like the fans were like oh, kind of man. Them, like a let's go celtics sort of like send off <laughs> to miami and then that it was nah, just- we're good <laughs> <laughs> i swear like the two or three shots that lebron missed I think he missed him on purpose just so he could fucking dunk the put back in. <laughs> like he, there was one play where he, he dunked the put back and his hand was like above the square. I was like, yeah, yeah. he, he really enjoys this one. And you know, like at least in his early years, mm-hmm. I think the Celtics were his biggest um, adversary. Certainly oh, yeah. not anymore. Absolutely. So like, it's no. I, I always like when, when KG and Pierce kind of get in the news and they talk about how they may have been the ones to get LeBron from Cleveland mm-hmm. to Miami. That may be true, but yeah. I don't think it's worth mentioning anymore just because he's gone on to do nah. so much. And it's like, yeah, right. we can uh, – that was good. a feather in our cap like 10 years ago. I don't know about now, but like, how do you, how do you feel about LeBron? Um, I, I think I kind of agree with Dan a lot. I mean, I, I pre- appreciate is the word for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, I have friends who just can't stand LeBron. I'm like, you guys just need right. to get past hating LeBron. Just appreciate what this guy's doing because yeah, once he's gone, like, you know, that's once in a lifetime type of – of a talent. I mean, we're talking about either him or Jordan is the greatest of all time. Well, I, I've said this too on the show. It's like, I, I, I've always said, and this is like how I'll say this. Like I like, I like and respect LeBron. I don't like LeBron, like LeBron stands, like just crazy LeBron guys. Cause I I've said, I, I think LeBron is comfortably the second best player in the history of the NBA. And LeBron fans take that as an insult. It's like, bro, like what, yeah. what do you want me to say? Like, that's pretty good company. No. Yeah, like, oh, well, you're just a, you're just a hater. Like, right. the bar Whatever, right <laughs> Whatever, dude. It's a good argument. I mean, I know we're not gonna yeah. have it, but it's definitely a good argument that it'll just always be the art. And no one's ever going to be like, you know what, you're right. Okay. Like if you yeah, exactly. if you're on the Jordan yeah, side, yeah, I see your point. Yeah, yeah. You know, I the hear longer you. LeBron plays and like has success, like the more he makes his oh, game. it's not crazy. Yeah. I, I said this last time. It's like it, him getting six is not unheard of. He wins this year, they have five. You, you, you're telling me he can't get another championship in the next five yeah. years? This year's looking- absolutely. This year's absolutely. Looking- you have a young prime Anthony Davis. Um, you live in LA where you can recruit talent. Yeah. That, that is definitely not unheard of unless it, it, it would be due to injury, which not for nothing. Right. I think the only reason they lose this year would be due to injury. Um, right. So we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, man, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go. Uh, before we One do, thing. where's the best? One Go thing ahead. we didn't talk yeah. about Cornette, and I know so so oh, was like Yo, murder, we murder talk about yeah <laughs> yeah look, okay well, let we me got get ten this minutes question in real we got quick. ten minutes yeah um, oh, okay. we're actually going on like, Sway's podcast later tonight Causeway. oh really why yeah well, he can wait you tell him I said these guys can wait yeah <laughs> they're on my time Go ahead. Have, have you been on there I assume you have no actually you know what that's funny I actually haven't because probably because we're on each other so on the same one yeah, all the time that's true. that's true you know what i'm gonna actually give him i'm gonna give him crap for that because that's yeah that's please. messed up that he we'll, we'll talk you up tonight yeah, yeah mm. really messed up go ahead so Wait. the luke speaking Cornette of thing, all time greats yeah speaking of uh, uh numbers that should be retired soon <laughs> luke cornet dude i couldn't find i was trying to find it last night i couldn't remember couldn't find him on the internet you guys were talking about it in the post game um but basically it was like the first or second game after he got acquired and I think that your comments came because Bobby was tr- like kind of, he wasn't necessarily talking Cornette up, but he was. Oh, talking he was. About, 
Okay, he was. I was trying to be polite. <laughs> he was talking about like the benefits of Luke Cornett, and everyone else was like, "Come on, man! Like this is Luke <laughs> Cornett we're talking about." Luke Cornett. <laughs> Can you revisit the comments that you made? It was something to the effect of like, "I don't, I don't know what it is about his play, but he's just like a goofy, tall white guy. He wears funny socks, and like I don't see any pros yes. from this guy." I mean, he. Mm. So, so did you guys go to high school in Nashua? I did. Dan did. I went to North. Okay. So the way I, the way I explain Luke Cornett, like Luke Cornett went to Bishop Curtin, you know, like he's just that, like, and that's where I went. So I can say that. <laughs> oh, you know? okay. Gotcha. But, like, but huh. he's like, he's just like that, that. Yeah. He's know, a BG kid. As, as a BG kid, you know, he's got the slacks. I said, I said this to him, I was like, dude, he might, I haven't seen a warm up of him yet, but he might work. He might warm up in slacks. <laughs> or his <laughs> letterman jacket. And, like he did BG he letterman jacket. Have, like the rip. He just shows up in like his Sunday best, like ready to that's go to so church. Funny. Nothing wrong with that if that's his thing. But like he just like you look at his like everything about him. It's like, dude, you just need a stylist, man. Like that's all. Like 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 you're seven feet, man. You can probably do pretty good with the ladies, but you got to change that hair first of all. You get gotta, a haircut. Like, yep. Let me hook you up with a barber. You mm-hmm. you got to like get some jeans, maybe. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like those black socks that he wears, like they're like they're like this. Like it's like he just got off of work and he just like showed up at the at the stadium like from his nine to five like selling insurance or something and he's like he looks I like my, looks like gordon hayward basketball. at butler but he, of yeah. current age current adult yeah. he looks like, like gordon like, hayward just didn't change since like, yeah, he's, like he's just like the classic like it feels like the classic just like brad stevens type like tall white goofy center like you know there's been yes. a few that have come in come through the the team over the years and like Hey, he can actually hit. He can actually hit hit the three. I say like every time he hits a shot, like a little bit of me dies inside because that that tells me like less time for Rob, and I like, just want to see Rob out yeah. there, even though Rob Very got point. torched by Embiid. But but so did Luke Cornett. So did, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. That yeah. possession was hysterical. Oh my Christ! That's my I didn't, I didn't my decent deal. looking jumper. I will say. That. Oh yeah, I, I actually think he's it's performing crazy. better than my expectations. Um, he's also getting way more minutes than my expectations. Yeah. Uh, that's but the just, just, that's thing about that team, bro. It's like every night there's at least two or three guys out. So, and it right. always changes. Like one night, you know, it's cycles between like Langford, Tristan, uh, I don't know, Kemba, obviously on back to backs. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. There's always, uh, Grant, they're always missing. What else something. am I forgetting? Who's like the other? Oh, Mo Wagner. I don't know what his deal is anymore. Uh, you might not crazy. see a whole lot of him. You might not see much of him anymore. <laughs> If but anything, your point that. about Rob, like if anything with Tice, it's it's addition by subtraction because I guess right. it gives Rob the opportunity to start and stuff like that. The but only way the guys they got, right. nah, that ain't it. Yeah, Danny literally had to ship players out of town so that Brad would play Rob. No, that was, sh- no kidding. Yeah, <laughs> you know what was concerning too about when they acquired Luke Cornett, and I saw this video on the CLNS uh, YouTube page, which mm-hmm. everyone should subscribe to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, is that. There was a video of Brad's press conference and the, the the caption was something like, we've been trying to go after this guy for years. And he was talking about yeah. Luke Cornett. Yeah. I was like, what? What stopped you? Yeah. Who, <laughs> okay. who got in your way? <laughs> right. Who the yeah. hell stopped you from getting him? Yeah. They're like, yeah, they wouldn't accept a fifth round draft draft because they don't <laughs> exist. So we could get him. I'm the guy also hasn't Brad. hit the weight room. Like he has no definition no, to his bro, body, he's... which is another goofy part, right? I would Dude, think like so. He, Doesn't like help. I'm telling you, he's just like he's just a guy. He's just a tall guy. <laughs> he's a tall guy. Yeah. He's a tall guy. Yeah, the Celtics have a lot of tall guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting yeah. for Brad. You said Brad said that or Danny said that? Brad said this. Okay. So I'm waiting for Brad to like get on a podcast or like a, a presser or something and and go down the line and like compare it to like when um Red Auerbach made all those moves to draft Len Bias in like the 1980s. Yeah. We've had our eyes on this guy since grade What well, we had to do to make this happen. We had the guy, and now we got him, and not yeah. nothing. Three and one. Two hey, and two. I mean, they're three and one, actually. They're playing winning basketball. He makes winning plays. The way their roster and salary is all set up for the offseason, he, he might be back. <laughs> he I might sure. be a guy that they want to lock up for a couple of years at a <laughs> At a good Dude, right. in my Luke Cornett City Edition jersey. Please do not use the hey, phrase lock up with Luke Cornett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. You got to protect your assets. That's business 101. That's true. But uh, pro- all right. Go I ahead, promise so this what? is the last thing for you, Jimmy. For Christ's sakes. Go ahead. Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> I got all night, man. Joe Swayze is the one who's going to be waiting, not me. 
Yeah, that's true. He can wait. <laughs> it took him long enough to ask us to come on the show. So yeah, uh, okay. we talked about Madison Square Garden. Mm. We obviously have been indirectly talking about the TD Garden, but you're from the area. So the Nashua Garden, are you familiar? Mm. Oh, yeah, dude. What was your favorite sandwich? And also, oh, if geez. there was a Jimmy Toscano sandwich, because they uh, like for anyone listening, we haven't asked this question in a long time, but this is they name all their sandwiches question. after like uh, well-known uh, New England, like athletes and celebrities, yeah. whatever. So celebrity Jimmy Toscano. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say the Bill Buckner. That's for sure. I'm not going to say the Bill Buckner because I yeah. think that's just two slices bread of bread and... with nothing in it. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. So that, that, that's a good one. I'm pretty, I'm a pretty simple sandwich guy. I mean, I would, you know, I, just, I think the Larry bird is, is that like the, I haven't been there in years. Chicken involved. I think something like that. Yeah, I remember the big poppy was good. It was like Turkey and pepperoni or something like that. But, Dude, uh, the, yeah. The, they make a good the sandwich. Jimmy, the Jimmy Toscano sandwich would, it would, it would be a type of Italian sub, you know, a little gob of ghoul in there, you know, you get the, uh, Jimmy Soprano. Uh, you know, get it, you know, nice and pressed on uh, maybe like a, um, it's like a ciabatta of some kind sure that'd probably be my sandwich there at the, at the garden dude the garden's a good time i haven't been there in a minute either, a good but time me neither i used to do man i beat, forget what beat the clock at the garden was always that's a good what time. it was I, I i'll tell you this quick quick story uh -huh. this was like early early on like when i just had turned maybe a couple years after 21 or whatever after mm. that and we were at the garden beat the clock is sick it's awesome and uh not 21 i was a few years probably probably out of college actually okay uh, beat the clock is sweet and like i was drinking ciders for some reason i cannot tell you man i had so many ciders that night <laughs> i woke up the next morning i had to like i woke up the next morning with like i've never had a worse hangover in my life and it was like and i don't even get hangovers because i don't really yeah, yeah. Be like that anyways but like this was bad it was because i didn't know any better but it was like all sugar like, oh, of course just yeah. the worst you know, I, I terrible never, idea terrible i was stupid i i wasn't even thinking sure. i was like wait these are only 25 cents or 50 cents like yeah keep them coming i'm like it's apple juice or whatever dude I'll, you <laughs> know next morning i'm like i got the spins like i yeah. i can't even like function as a human being so that you know that's unfortunately it, one of the things i remember about the garden but yeah great sandwiches they got the shuffleboard table upstairs which is pretty cool too yeah Ooh. very deceiving pricing um because like you're not going to put a quarter on the table. <laughs> like, no, one it adds up, dude. Yeah. So it's like, all right, like I have $5. I guess I'll take 10 beers. <laughs> like what am I yeah. supposed to I'll do? buy them for these guys too. It's only 50 cents. Yeah. Know? That's so, usually like, how it works. It's usually a community thing. Yeah, um, man, you ever go up to UNH at all? To party uh, or go out at all? UNH? Yeah, I've been to UNH, Scorps, okay. Libby's. Um, yep. Okay. So same thing. We're, we're both UNH guys, but same, same economics at Scorps, like dollar drink night from like yeah. for two hours. I'm like, well, what, what the fuck am I? Yeah, I'm not gonna show up there with a bunch. It's of, gonna take me two hours to get the five dollar minimum to open my tab. So like, yeah, the twenty, UNH, and I, I'll just UNH see. UNH was a blast. I, I didn't yeah. get up there as much as I wanted to, but whenever I did, I, I definitely tried to make it count, which is a good time. Well, we should once once things open back up, we'll do a live show from Scorp's basement and uh, <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, a good idea. Should be good acoustics for it. Nashua Garden, by the way, if you're listening, which I assume you are. I'm going to apologize, but that's the worst bathroom in the history of public oh, bathrooms. My that God. bathroom deserves like a 30 for 30, like on how <laughs> fucked up that place. The upstairs bathroom, upstairs yeah. bathroom to like the right of the bar, there's no lock, and there's it's no just a toilet facing the door. <laughs> Dude, there's so, no divider to like if you Nothing. Need to it's literally a, a just wide open shot. So I'm like, all right, either someone's going to see my ass, or if you're savage enough to take a take a, a shit at a bar which is a whole nother conversation yeah. that means like you're just like just literally sitting looking at the door <laughs> like you're just <laughs> you're just sitting there like this like don't yeah yeah door. like there's no way if you have to use the bathroom there it is like an absolute emergency there's no you're way sit with like your foot up against the door just like <laughs> yeah just, just give her the but old steven them, jackson like, stiff arm like, they're just like you know what we don't want anyone you we'll, we'll put a bathroom in. we don't want, want we don't want anyone using it so we're Correct. gonna make sure there's no lock and like no <sighs> privacy whatsoever i think downstairs was a little more civil <laughs> in general like downstairs was more of a restaurant upstairs was a shit show yeah. like at those dollar drink nights or beat the clock whatever that floor was like thumping like up and down like i don't know how that thing didn't collapse multiple times and you know what? prayers no, to anyone who's like ever Celtics. had a stomach ache there well the thing is like some of the people i've seen roll into that upstairs like mm -hmm. 
they probably have no problem taking a dump in the, in that probably bathroom. the regulars. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. some characters that go in and out. Of that. <laughs> sure are. Uh, but yeah, shout out Nashville Garden. I haven't been there in a while. I owe that place yeah, a, out, uh, a resurface. Street. Yeah, there's there's some other great. Fodies is a, another. Yeah, I've been out in Nashville in a long time, man. To be honest, like I was more of like. Yeah. I know it's like a chain, but Margaritas in Nashville is always Margaritas fun. is a great time, yeah. Yeah, Garden's good. What else is out there? Fodies is cool. Are you uh, originally from Nashua, Jimmy? I'm from Pelham. Oh, yeah. Pelham. Oh, okay. My bad. Nice. Right. Do you yeah, ever get back to, up to the area? Yeah, all the time. Where do you live yeah. now? In the Boston area? Boston, yeah, Charlestown. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. Nice. The town. The town. It's not too far, not too far away. And I got my family still in, in Pelham, and I still get some friends in the area, so. Nice come back and uh hang out i don't really hit up those places that much anymore yeah i'm not in any i don't blame go you back there yeah. <laughs> i'm not What's in that? any rush to hit uh national no bars and see the no same more, people uh, i went to high school with thanksgiving break where i used to like cram those bars in this is the worst night anymore, ever <laughs> those were the worst mornings ever what was the chinese yeah. place seven dragons or yes like, five, five dragons. dragons five dragons yeah, right fuck. across from margaritas right that place is a yep. nightmare. Yeah, I believe Peddler's so. Daughter. You you've been there, Jimmy? Peddler's Daughter. That's the one I was trying to think of. Yeah. Oh, Peddler's is good. I do like I, that. I like Peddler's a lot. That's probably that's the, the nicest place I still go to. Right yeah, on the they waterfront. Can, like, live music action. Yeah, there. that's a good spot. Good spot. Um. Anyway, I know we're running a little over. That's where we Nashua. Go, Jimmy. Where, where's the best place? <laughs> yeah, that's a national portion of the show. Find you online. Yeah, hit me up on Twitter. I guess that's probably the best place. Jimmy underscore Toscano. And like I said, like we go live after like every Celtics yep. game. Um. YouTube's the best place to watch it, but we do tweet out the videos on our accounts too. You won't get the same like chat functionality right. and stuff. So I always tell people go to CLNS Media YouTube and you know subscribe there and you get all the notifications when videos are going, getting posted and going live. The other thing is like if you just want like straight up news, like we post like post game, you know, coverage of all the player interviews and coaches interviews and all that cool stuff too. So nice. um, yeah, it's probably the best best place to find me for now. Definitely. And the locker room app. And thank you. The Locker Room app is our brand new um, sponsor for our Garden Report shows on YouTube. We're on the Locker Room now. And so what we do is we cut our Locker Room, we cut our YouTube show um, a little short, and we finish it over on the Locker Room. So what that does is lets our listeners or viewers chime in on Locker Room and actually like they can, you know, they can talk, they can get their points across that they're pounding away in the chat that nobody's responding to, but they can actually get on there and say, John, you're an idiot. Here's why, you know, so mm. like, something like that so it it's it's been cool we 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 went live last night we had over 100 people in the room like right away which it's a pretty huge number for a locker room that's i'm hopping in there tomorrow night yeah hop in great your account hop on in and the charade's been in there the last couple games um sort of rotate and yeah friday night should be uh should be a fun one all right cool make sure you send this to charade we'd love to have him on the show too i think oh dude i'm sure he'd love to love to hop on i'll I'll let him know definitely um all right man we'll let you go thanks for hopping on and um <clears throat> excuse me we'll have you on again sometime soon hopefully yeah if i ever start my own podcast i'll make sure to have you guys on too sounds good man appreciate, appreciate it, you man. Man.